Ademai, Naomai, Tenokotu, Ko Chandasanaika, Aho. Well, welcome to the second uh, video. I hope you enjoyed the first. This one is going to be a bit more in depth, uh, just to answer some of the questions that we that have come back to us. So apologies for the length of the video. So as we all know, COVID has had a huge impact on our lives, uh, both emotionally and physically. And I'm sure all of us uh, are still reeling from uh, what's happened over the last year. I'd like to say that the medical community recommends immunization as a strategy to end this ep epidemic. And in fact, as we all know, generations of Kiwis have been immunized to protect themselves against disease. This vaccine is the breast protection uh, against the virus, and it will protect you, your family, your whanau, our community, and therefore the whole of Team New Zealand, and ultimately gives us global protection. I really like the analogy our Prime Minister used about New Zealand being an island surrounded by water. And then we've also had our borders closed, we've got protected and managed isolation. So think about a castle with its walls, its moat, its inhabitants inside the castle. The next step now is to arm those inhabitants in the castle, in other words, to start immunising the population of our community and New Zealand. Globally, thus far, there are over 500 million doses that have been given worldwide. And we know this is safe and effective, and importantly, it is free to all New Zealanders. In New Zealand, we have bought 10 million doses of this Pfizer vaccine. That's enough to give everybody two doses. So don't panic, there is enough for everybody. It is clear that patients and people within the community are very anxious uh, about this vaccine due to lack of information or disinformation or myths that are currently going around. So the team at Karui Medical Centre have put together this video to help our patients and our community, help them make an informed decision. I hope this video will provide you with some factual information and will empower you all to take, to make an informed decision uh, about the vaccine and maybe hopefully take the vaccine. So Team 5 million needs this vaccine. Do your bit as our strength will come in numbers. Noho Oromo. Hi, my name is Jackie and I'm part of the COVID vaccine admin team. It will be my role to meet you when you first come in. There are a couple of important things we need to do on your arrival. The first being to ensure that we have all your correct details in the CIR system, which is the COVID immunisation register. The second being that your consent form is filled out and signed. And lastly, to ensure that, to, to let the vaccinator know that you're here and ready to go. Once you've had your vaccine, you will then go into an observation area where a trained observer will be observing you for the next 20 to 30 minutes for any side effects. Once your time is up, we will let you know. And if you're feeling great, then away you go. Hi, I'm Helen. I'm the nurse team leader at Corey Medical Centre. I'm here to talk you through various aspects of the COVID-19 vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine. Um, first of all, I'll talk about the cold chain. That's the name given to the process where the vaccine is kept at a certain temperature from manufacture to being delivered into your arm. And that's the same with this vaccine. Um, it is kept in deep freeze in Auckland. And then before um, it comes to us, it's defrosted and we have five days at a normal vaccine temperature range before we can use it. Um, every nurse giving you the vaccine has undergone special training in order to be able to safely deliver this vaccine. Um, there will be a consent process where you'll be told all about the side effects and you'll be worked through exactly what's going to happen to you. Um, two nurses always make sure that when we're diluting the vaccine, we do it safely and effectively to ensure 
maximum efficiency for you. Um, and after you've had your vaccination, you'll be kept for 20 minutes as, as you would for any other vaccine. Um, and there will be nurses and trained administration staff in the room with you just to make sure that you're absolutely fine before we let you go. Um, we dispose of everything within um, the infection control guidelines. Um, so higher standards are adhered to and this vaccine is extremely safe and we do encourage you to get it. We're fully trained and we just want to make sure you're totally safe. Hi, I'm Linda Allen. I'm the practice manager here at Karori Medical Centre. I want to talk to you today about the Community Immunisation Rollout Plan. All New Zealanders aged over 16 are eligible for the vaccine. We at Karori Medical Centre would recommend that you have the vaccine, even though it's not mandatory to have it. Here in New Zealand, the government has adopted a prioritised vaccine rollout schedule. This means that those at the highest risk of exposure and severe disease are vaccinated first. There are four groups of people involved in the stage rollout. Stage one is almost complete. That's the people working with managed isolation facilities and border workers. And we thank them for keeping us safe. Stage two has started and that's hospital workers and medical staff like ourselves. We anticipate stage three to start in May 2021. And those are the people that are aged 65 and over and those with severe risk if they were to catch COVID. Stage four is everybody else and we will contact you to let you know when you can come in and have your vaccination. As with all things COVID related, we're on a journey that has to be flexible. It's changing daily as more information comes to light. Timings may change. One of the trusted sources of information is the COVID-19 website page and the Facebook page. Um, and that's where we would all go for more information and advise you to do the same. Vaccines come to us at short notice and they have a short expiry. So timings may change um, and you may be invited at short notice to come in and have your vaccination. Here at Croy Medical Centre, you will be vaccinated by the people that you already know. They are proficient, kind and professional and we will do our very best to deliver this program to you all. All right, so how does this vaccine work? Well, this is for you science geeks out there. This is an mRNA uh, vaccine. It contains the genetic code, a fragment of the genetic code of the, of the virus encoded in a fat code, basically. And that's what goes into, the, the, in our, into our body. That teaches our immune system to form the immune response to the infection without having the infection. And that's how um, our immune system fights and, and anticipates the fighting of the infection in the future without us getting that COVID-19, COVID really. Uh, trials have shown that this is a very effective vaccine um, and uh, prestigious uh, New England uh, Medical Journal has shown that it's 95% effective after the second dose, seven days after the second dose of the vaccine. Um, this has been corroborated by uh, studies in Israel where it has been shown to be effective um, uh, across all genders, ages, ethnicities and etc. Two doses are uh, needed and required to achieve that and we know that the first dose actually gives us 60% immunity however the immunity fades up very quickly if we don't get the second dose. My name is Andrea Mogos. I'm a GP at Karori Medical Center. The COVID-19 mRNA vaccine has been vigorously tested before it was rolled out to the public. The vaccine has undergone the normal clinical trials that all vaccines undergo. There have been no shortcuts or skip steps. The vaccine has been passed as safe by the FDA in America 
the EMA in Europe and our own MedSafe in New Zealand. The vaccine has no live virus or inactivated virus and cannot give you COVID-19. In a safety review from the UK reviewing 2 million doses of the Pfizer vaccine in elderly patients, there was no increase in post-vaccine deaths over and above the normal background rate. The vaccine does not interfere with the body's DNA within the cell nucleus and is rapidly broken down by the body's defenses once its job is done. The vaccine does not alter or affect your DNA. The vaccine contains no adjuvants, no animal products, no monkey, no pork, no antibiotics, no blood products, no DNA, no egg protein, no soy products, no microchips, no gluten, no fetal material, no live virus, no preservatives like thimerosal. All vaccines are kosher and halal. The vaccine does not affect your fertility. My name is Mel. I am one of the doctors working here at Koroi Medical Centre. Um, I'm here today to talk a little bit about vaccine production and how we've kind of come to get this vaccine. So most vaccines take about four to five years to develop um, and as I'm sure you're all aware this one has happened in record time um, in just over a year. So I guess that poses a couple of questions. How is this possible? Have there been any safety corners that have been cut while this has been happening? Uh, I guess the short answer is no, to be honest, um, but the long answer is that COVID has stopped the world in its track uh, and as a result of that it means that huge, huge amounts of investment have gone into this vaccine and finding this vaccine. Uh, so typical financial hurdles that people often find um, when they're trying to develop a vaccine haven't been an issue um, and this means that things have been fast-tracked uh, and able to get through really quickly. Uh, I guess a good way to think about it would be like a priority bus lane. So imagine you're sitting in traffic uh, and normal vaccine development is like sitting in a car in normal traffic. Uh, you've got lots of cars on the road all trying to get to the same destination um, and things move pretty slowly. Uh, but the huge investment that we've seen with the COVID vaccine is kind of like opening up a priority bus lane. All of a sudden you get to shoot past all of the cars waiting in traffic and you get to your destination much, much faster. There haven't been any shortcuts, you've taken the same road, uh, you haven't gone a more dangerous way, you just haven't had any of those barriers and haven't had to compete with anybody else, so you've got there straight away. That's kind of how this works. Um, one other thing that people often feel a little bit uncomfortable about is how many people have this vaccine been tested on? What are the trials like? Uh, so we know that, you know, obviously COVID has had a massive impact on the world and we've had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people being infected with COVID, unfortunately. Uh, but what that does mean is that there's a huge number of people who are available to participate in trials, uh, to try out these Pfizer vaccines. And particularly with the Pfizer vaccine, we know there were 44,000 people in this trial. Um, the amazing thing with this is that there haven't really been any major side effects that have been um, reported, and especially none of really serious concern, just the common ones that have already been discussed today. Um, this information is continually being collected uh, and it's being sent through to us in MedSafe, our uh, national body, as often as we, uh, as we can. And there have been no sort of major trouble, no major trouble or drama with the Pfizer vaccine so far, which is really, really reassuring and a monumental achievement. what the side effects are for the COVID vaccine. Um, most side effects are mild and improve basically one to two days, um, sometimes less than more than a week. Um, the most common side effects are a sore arm at the injection site, headaches, um, you may also experience some fatigue, dizziness, nausea, and it is some similar to the flu vaccine. Um, you can give paracetamol safely uh, to treat any pain if you want. Um, any severe allergic reactions are rare and anaphylaxis only occurs in four to five cases per million doses. Um, every patient is reviewed and screened for possible reactions and we do have trained professionals in those observation areas to treat any or manage any reaction if it occurs. <laughs> So hi 
I am Jerry Fence, I'm one of the doctors here at Barori. I'm just going to talk about some of the contraindications to the COVID vaccine. So you shouldn't have the immunisation if you've got a fever above 38 degrees, if you're feeling intently unwell, or if you've currently got COVID, which is pretty unlikely. Uh, you shouldn't have the immunisation if you've previously had anaphylaxis or another severe allergic reaction to any of the parts of the, the um, immunisation, so particularly PEG, which is polyethylene glycerol. You also shouldn't have the immunisation if you've had a previous severe allergic reaction um, to, one of, to a previous COVID-19 vaccination. If you've had a previous history of anaphylaxis or a severe allergic reaction, such as to peanuts, then this isn't a contraindication to vaccinations, but we'd ask you to wait with us for 30 minutes after the immunisations rather than the standard 20. In terms of the spacing for the immunisation, we ask you to allow for two weeks before a flu immunisation or four weeks after a live immunisation, such as chickenpox or the MMR. But this might change as we get more information. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Rubin and I'm one of the doctors at the Crawley Medical Centre. I'm wanting to just give you a little information about the special groups of people in our community who are considering the COVID vaccination and to reassure you on some aspects of it. The first point to make is that this is not a live virus vaccine and having it will not cause you to contract COVID-19. Also important, uh, we want you to realise it doesn't affect your own DNA and it won't affect your fertility in the future. But with, as with all uh, medicines and vaccinations, we always want to discuss the pros and cons, risks and benefits of having a vaccination versus deciding not to have a vaccination. And this is particularly important if you're pregnant. Now we know from studies in, in the US which have looked um, at over 50,000 cases of pregnant women who were inadvertently given the COVID vaccination, we know that no serious events were recorded. Uh, but however, we also know that to contract COVID-19 whilst you're pregnant is really quite a serious thing. So our recommendation currently is that if you are at high risk um, and, and as in with you know, having respiratory illness or uh, immunocompromised, then you would have the vaccination, but otherwise you'd wait until um, the postpartum period. Um, this is obviously something that we would discuss with you in more detail. You do not have to uh, put off getting pregnant until um, you have the vaccination. With respect to breastfeeding, no problem at all and there's no reason for you not to be vaccinated. If you're immunocompromised, um, again that could put you at uh, risk of more serious consequences if you contracted COVID-19. So our recommendation would, would generally be that you would proceed with this, with the vaccination. If you have a specialist involved with your care, obviously it would be good to discuss it uh, with him or her as well. Similarly, those with blood disorders, uh, for example, the bleeding disorders like haemophilia or people taking anticoagulants, again, we would recommend that you proceed with vaccination. With children, uh, the area is, is less clear. Uh, there's a lack of clinical trials in uh, people under 16 years of age, though recent trials with the Pfizer vaccine have indicated that it may be suitable in 12 year olds. <clears throat> so this is an area for further research and we'll, we'll keep you up to date with things as, as we learn it ourselves. What we don't know is how long the immunity lasts once you've had the vaccination. We're hoping and assuming that it will be at least eight months to a year um, and again more information will become available about this. Obviously in the long term we'd like to think that this might be an annual immunisation that you would combine even with the flu vaccination to make it strategically easier for you to get this you know, to have cover on a yearly basis. So we will keep you informed. Uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, within our practice. Once. Kia ora koutou, ko jewho, taukei ngā wai. Hi, I'm one of the GPs at Team Karori Medical Centre. And like you, I'm one of a team of five million. 
Here in Karori, we're lucky to live in the middle of Middle Earth. And we enjoy freedoms that is the envy of the world because of the collective efforts of everybody in New Zealand. Our country has a big moat around it, and we've erected strong castle walls and manned those borders with MIQ workers. But every now and then, some COVID still gets through, some orcs get through those borders. So, what can we do in this crazy world, and what can you do here in Karori to protect us? This is a call to arms to get vaccinated. There's plenty of vaccine to go around, and there's been a lot of thought that's gone into who gets vaccinated first and in what order. So we'll let you know when your turn comes up. When your number comes up, roll up your sleeve and get vaccinated. Don't hesitate. Be proud. Skype to your friends that you've been vaccinated. I had my vaccination two weeks ago, didn't feel a thing, and I'm looking forward to my second vaccination next week. Getting vaccinated not only protects you, it protects your whānau, your family, our country, our freedom. I have a son and daughter who live in Brisbane and London, and I'm looking forward to getting back to seeing them. KMC has been protecting you and your families for many years by vaccinating you against tetanus, polio, whooping cough, measles, mumps, rubella, and the flu. Now we're gonna protect you against COVID-19. You can trust us. This is our thing. This is what we do. This, in this call to arms, we want you to link arms and let's make this happen together. But in this call to vaccination, let's not forget all the things that we've learned over the last year about COVID-19. Let's make sure we do the basics. Make sure you wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, cough into the crook of your elbow. Socially and physically distance when appropriate and wear a mask on public transport. And don't forget to use your COVID tracer app. Um, if you're sick, stay at home, St stay away from work. Uh, and if you need a note and you need advice, get in touch with the medical centre. We're here for you. Let's do this together. Kia kaha karori, nā mihi nui. So, uh, why get immunised? Well, it's for our own self-protection, protection for our family and our whānau, our community, our country, and to protect the planet. If we immunise, we can return to some semblance of normality and travel can resume. So, get vaccinated. More strength, more freedom, more options. We will be contacting you and organising COVID immunisations for, for our protection and your protection. Now, Mel, you're young and statistically I know that your age group may not choose to get vaccinated or have chosen uh, maybe to say this isn't the problem for us. What have you got to say about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really important point. Um, we know that, that young people, so people in their 20s and their 30s, um, tend to have lesser effects of the COVID and so may think, actually, why bother? This isn't going to affect me. Why should I get vaccinated? Uh, and I guess there's two reasons, and particularly two reasons why I'm getting vaccinated myself. Um, and the first one is thinking about long COVID. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about that, but it's essentially this COVID infection that younger people are getting that are noticing really awful side effects months and months and months down the track. Trouble with their breathing, trouble with fatigue, really not back to the usual self. And so that's the first, I guess, semi-selfish reason that I'm going to get vaccinated. Uh, and the second reason is to protect those that can't, to be honest. Um, so there are a portion of people who will not be able to get vaccinated uh, and I'm taking it as my personal responsibility to limit the ability and, and reverse or I guess negate the ability for me to get infected with COVID Good. and that means I can't give it to anybody who's more vulnerable uh, or who hasn't been able to be vaccinated and therefore might be at worse effects of COVID. So that's why I'm doing it and that's why I encourage anybody else who's my age or dare I say it, maybe even younger uh, to get vaccinated. I think those are very good reasons Mel and I hope other people uh, in your age group will follow that fantastic advice. 
So I should just add that this video is up to date for April 21. Yeah. And of course, as we know, with anything connected with COVID, things can change and do change rapidly. So we will be trying to keep up to date and keep you guys up to date. And we'll be producing another video shortly. I'd like to have a special thanks, though, uh, to everybody at Corey Medical Centre who's been working away on this video and helping produce it, especially also to Kurt Murphy and to Simon Wolf for their help with the media production. So, hey kona mai, ki ora rawa atu, noho ora mai. So what can you do? Well, Karori, it's time for you to put on your own personal suit of armour. This is a call to arms to get vaccinated. There is plenty of vaccine to go around, and a lot of thought has gone in to who goes first and in what order. Thank you.